This morning we ran um, an experiment that was aimed at getting at this Proustian phenomenon, this idea that a smell has a, uh, a specialised or prioritised uh, position in memory. This, this Proustian moment is something that, that appears in psychology textbooks um, and is always represented as an example of how um, an, an odour or smell will evoke kind of immediate and, and po emotionally powerful um, memories from the distant past. In the Madeleine episode uh, suggests that there's a strong relationship between smells, taste and emotion and memory. Many people have thought that um, this might, this strong connection might be a result of the way that our brain is organised because it turns out that smell, emotion and memory, autobiographical memory, are all processed in the limbic system. I think this is a great example of how a piece of literature actually brings together scientists and literary scholars, philosophers, psychologists, because Proust is describing his own experience in exquisite detail and giving us insights about how memory isn't just immediately evoked, but bit by bit it starts to unravel and it starts to unfold. He did have a kind of a, a very comforting um, emotional reaction to the tea Madeleine combination, but, but that wasn't a memory of his childhood just then. He knew that the tea Madeleine combination meant something really important to him, he just wasn't sure what. Uh, the Madeleine is important because it's become a kind of cultural signifier uh, of um, how one encounters an involuntary set of memories. In other words, something in your present triggers a great deal about your past. We presented images to individuals while they were smelling a particular stimulus and then asked them to recognise the images again to say whether or not they'd seen uh, the image before, whether they'd committed it to memory. The idea was to get a, an accuracy measure of working memory and whether or not having a olfactory cue linked to the visual stimulus facilitated that visual memory. We have different memory systems. We know that, so we have a visual memory, for example, we have a verbal memory. Um, these are somewhat independent, but also closely intertwined. After all, we have to talk about things that we see. So these are interconnected. Looking at the relationship between smell and another kind of memory, semantic memory, we found that there are languages, in fact, where there is a strong connection between semantic memory and smells. For too long, um, psychology has focused too much on the individual perceptions of a particular modality, and really we're starting to blow that apart. And we're fully aware that that's not how we experience our day-to-day -day life. Using this kind of cross-modal interaction, this look of this facilitatory effect of smell and vision and visual memory, maybe gets us a little bit closer to looking at a perceptual experience in the complexity that we really live in. We want to understand how that's working, and we also have to use traditional philosophers of perception, but also the recent insights in neuroscience to show how we can better understand ourselves and our experience. We're hardwired for certain things, but on top of that hardwiring, there's an awful lot that's open to change and, and um, is susceptible to environmental influence, susceptible to cultural influence. Memory is fundamentally shaped by culture and context. They are inextricably linked. And I think one way that we can see that is through the role that language plays. So language is a reflection both of culture and of cognition at the same time. In many traditional societies where there's still little or no literacy, there's very different ways of coping with the acts of remembering and cultural memory and I think those have not been studied psychologically and ought to be. Well I think in memory research we're coming to learn more and more that it's not about simply recording something and playing it back later. When we remember we're actually in the act of recreating We've got little snippets of information, we've got little clues, but we recreate the story of what happened before. And each time we do, we add new pieces to it from our contemporary surroundings. So our memories actually get elaborated and embellished. And in a way, it's their general faithfulness to what we need to know and what's important, rather than their immediate and full accuracy about how things were in the past.